Right, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part 26 of Project Bandit Tail Unit. Um, got the basic part of the frame done. The line around the bottom is the most important thing. Once like the skirt, the defining bottom edge, and all the rest is going to come, going to come above. Uh, so tonight, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to build some lines around the back. A couple of those bent rods again, more bent rods. I'm just going to run them around the back to bring the, the curve down. The reason being that obviously it's not going to be dead flat. I'm going to run it along, just looking in the, in the picture, going to go along and then come up to the front. So it's going to come up at the front, where are we? It's going to come up at the front and give it that um, kind of modern bike look that it'll end in a seat hump. So it's just going to give a nice ergonomic shape to ride, something that's nice and comfortable. Um, but to support that curve at the front, it's going to have to have some metal bracing uh, that I can then uh, bond the fiberglass to so that it follows the correct lines and shape. So there we are. That's the plan anyway. Let's see if we can actually make it happen. Stick around, stay tuned. Time for another one. So this will bring that curve down gradually. I'll come a bit lower with the next one and then line them in so that they're solid, hopefully. This starts to rest on the frame as well now. Weld a little washer on the bottom so that it can rest and then be sat on and it's not pressing on anything vulnerable or flexing this or pushing on the mounts because the mounts are just to hold it in the side they're not about they're not about strength or holding the weight of the rider or anything. down to about 10 minutes now to make each one to get the line absolutely right. Okay. And already it's quicker in some ways because I'm taking cues off other parts. So I know exactly where that goes because that's correct. This is correct in the first place. You just pop it in that web. Jobs are good. And tack them in. And it starts to get quicker and easier. Hopefully. Speak too soon, honestly. Right. Just if you're starting welding, if you don't know much about it, these little blue rings that you get around the metal uh, indicate that you've turned it, you've, you've pushed it over 800 degrees, which is where it goes cherry red, and you fuse the metal together good and proper. And that's rock solid. Do the other side.
That's it. Getting stiffer all the time. third and lowest and then everything else will sit above that. Okay, right. Right, let's, let's show you what the thinking behind this is. The idea here, something like that. All right, now these three bars, quite simply, uh, where are we, that's it. Those two, to start with, are still a little bit flexible because they're on just that wire there and they're not effectively um, braced yet, but that's going to be braced across there in just a sec. Um, and this one, if you look down there, now what that does is it gives me the curve of the seat, which is what I want. So I need a couple of little brace pieces in that are just ever so slightly curved to follow the line, and then there will be a front solid piece, and then it's just a case of linking the front to the back. But before I can link it, I've got to have something to link it to, so then that means the hoop so it's going to tack in some little bar pieces strengthen all this up and then that is the front pretty much prepared ready for link in between okay It needs a slight curve just to follow the line of the seat. That should do it. You just use an offcuts for it. Right, so I'm tacked in. Tracking that.
Somebody asked me in the mail the other day, do you have a fire extinguisher? Uh, yes, and I've got two of them, and they're just within reach. Right, bit of a story so far now. Um, this is the front curve that I said about. This is going to give me that classic seat unit curve. So it follows the tank line down. Um, it has to flow. That's then going to come up. So you've got a nice curved seat unit, something nice to sit on. And this curve round effectively is going to let, you know, legs drop round for comfort. Um, now, obviously, the next section, the next thing to do um, is going to be going across here. Um, and I don't want to go across here in ribs because it just seems, I don't know, it I think I need more length strength, I need more tensile strength uh, because if you put rods back there they're all going to move and the idea is that I've got to clear these things that are in the way. The finished item has got the item's got to sit probably about two inches above this edge lip. So it means starting off, this is what this extra rib was for in the middle, if you can call it ribs, you know. Um, that will come off there and then go back and that will give me a lip and then another one will come in here, which is higher up. So that will be a little higher still, then another one higher still. So I can come across here with maybe probably one, two, three rods either side. And that will give me a reasonable curve to the, to the seat pan. Um, but that's no good. I, can't, I can weld it to there now. I've done the front, but I can't do anything. I've got nothing to weld to. So the very next bit is to put the... Um, I suppose that the curve in the back that's going to give that definitive seat hump calf racer look, which means more form it to that, hopefully, and it should work. Right, now I'm hoping I can just come off this as a shape. Um, I'll just give that a little bit of persuasion. Working quite well actually. I think I'll say so myself. Right. I think that's all the forming I can do on that. Use it as a visual guide now. It only needs the tiniest pressure and it moves quite significantly. It's quite, quite perfect as a raw material. If you don't want to do anything like this for your bike, if you want to make any anything for your rack bike, or even if you just want to make a rack, if you just wanted to make a nice back rack, you carry your sarnies to work, then this stuff would be perfect. And as long as you triangulate everything enough, it's as strong as it needs to be. You're not going to sit anyone on it. Right, that is an exact replica of the original. So that and that are now absolutely cock on. So this now needs to go in that defining position there. Now, question is. How high? How high is a Chinaman? Now, the, what's really important, the height of this, is with the height of the tank. So I've got to do some measuring and make sure that this sits at the right height exactly so that visually it all fits in and works. Kind of. Right, using one of the rods, um, simplest solution here was to scrub it off the paddock stand a minute. So that's wheels on the ground. 
and that puts that line along there uh, completely flat which gives me the height that I need to run the tailpiece it's as simple as that that's the easiest way because now the top of the tank and the top of the tailpiece are absolutely in line which is really important you see a lot of rat bikes street fighters that sort of thing that are built and little bits of attention like that just taking the time to build a little jig just get that level right it looks quite high but it needs to be because if it's not the right height if it's down there it's just going to look the whole the whole back end will just look diminutive and below the front it'll just it'll all sit wrong it just won't have the right lines so it's important that 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 line comes up as high as that much as that's probably a little high it will work aesthetically because the actual seat when it's on is going to be that sort of height so it's still not going to give me any more than about a four or five inch tail rest which should work quite well so what I'm going to do now is clamp all this in place mark it cut those rough ends off and then butt weld that on and I can triangulate it in so it's nice and stiff and that gives me something to start running the back end This also gives me a center of exactly where the center line of the bike is using the uh, filler cap and this upright for the back light which is taken from a plumb line straight off the center of the tire so everything's in line so this curve will be exactly in line and it will look good because it will be square. hot so long. Mind you, I suppose it takes a while to drop down from 1300 degrees, doesn't it? Definitely. Right, take the jig off. Now I know that's central, everything's straight. And in line. And however cockeyed it might look to the eye when you when you glance at it, it's actually straight. It's just a visual delusion. There we go. Right. And brace it. There we are, quick walk round. All these, now and again, that piece I measured in, but due to the way this curve's gone, I came five mil further down by accident when that was welded on, which meant that was five mil further away. So I welded a piece in, I took a little noggin, like that, a little nub, um, and welded it in sideways, welded it in sideways to bridge the gap, which is why that weld 
is the size it is it's basically a, a piece welded that weighs along and then that gave me the reach so that, that reached without faffing around cutting another piece um, now these two pieces here they're going to be I'm going to Quite simply, once they're all, the next thing, when I get back in the garage, because I've had enough now, uh, these are going to get a slight curve inwards. And what I'm going to do is just manipulate them in by hand. Um, what I use is one of them. And it's ever so simple. You just twist like that all the way along, and it gives you a little bit of a curve to it, or that way in, rather. Um, and it will pull this piece further forward very slightly and it is able to do so because what I've done is put it on a curve there so as that curves come up blah 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 that whole piece will be able to rotate forward under its own bend and then give this a little bit of a curve in but that curve's been achieved quite nicely at the front um, these are said will curve down and then that gives the space if you look under there that gives the air gap for what I need it'll get probably another one from there in the center coming back uh, to probably go on top of that to give it a bit of height um, and then I'll run one up to the top to hold it so it doesn't flex and then that will give that central piece um, a little bit of a curve on the on the fiberglass when it comes as for the back bit I put that in the one thing with that was to get it absolutely dead square the exact height it looks too high but actually when you stand back it's the same height as the tank. Remember the bike's up on a paddock stand three inches off the ground. When you put it on the ground, it looks perfect. It actually follows the line of the tank bang on. And all I'm gonna do, little bits like this, are gonna find, whoops, they're gonna find their way all the way across the back to give that curvature and then do the blah blah that we said earlier. So there we go. That's another little step forward. It's actually building up quicker than I thought. So there we go thank you for your amazing support with this it is driving me on it, it seriously is without knowing that people are interested as much as you are uh, i'd probably just do a quick job of it and let the fiberglass do the strength and when the fiberglass goes on it will add strength to it this will be strong enough as a frame but it's got to take my weight and obviously impact on the ground so i don't want it moving and flexing and also the frame's got sport fiberglass i'm not going to put uh, a 10 mil thick wood of fiberglass on it. I've got a very cunning plan to use cotton and carbon fiber. Uh, not fancy ass carbon fiber that you see on pipes and race bikes. It's just going to be some carbon matting which I've got. Uh, it came with a, a fantastic uh, cache of fiberglass that my mate Jeff sent me uh, from um, Connecticut and he wanted, he didn't need it so he sent it over and in there with it there is some white carbon matting or some Kevlar matting I think it is so that will be used also some cotton cloth lots of plans there we go but today that's been great to get the front web in uh, all the welds are good and strong the whole thing is now rigid um, little things like these two corners are sticking out a bit much I'm not sure I like them uh, I may just lop them off there I'm not sure all this can grow and evolve as I go but I'm glad to be making some proper progress with it now and be looking forward to designing um, the back end which is the, the kind of crown and glory the defining style of the bike and then get it finished so I can ride it I do want to ride this before the season's out and it's rolling to a close now I put aside about 15 weeks for this build I thought it would take about 15 maybe 18 weeks at the most because of the time that I just have free isn't very much and this has taken ten and a half so I'm all over two thirds of the way of the time I allow myself I'm going to run out of time so I probably will postpone the front until the new year it's a rat bike it will always get something being done this is the great thing with owning it but I want to focus on this I don't want to bodge that finish it quick so I can do the front that's the wrong way to do it I'm going to focus on the back end so there we are once that's done I should be able to put it back on the road and enjoy it again Thanks for tuning in, Ambleton, there was Garage. Always appreciate your kind support. Take care, right safe. See you next time.